Over the last nearly two years, the course of the pandemic has shifted so frequently that many of us are feeling whiplash. The most recent upheaval occurred when the Omicron variation was discovered, rapidly increasing case counts. Although the symptoms induced by this variety appear to be less severe than those caused by previous iterations such as Delta, hospitals and other healthcare facilities remain overburdened to the point of postponing elective surgeries and mobilizing the National Guard. As World Health Organization Director General Tedros Adhanom Ghebreyesus, PhD, stated during a recent press conference, make no mistake, Omicron is causing hospitalizations and deaths, and even milder instances are overwhelming health institutions. The infection is spreading at an alarming rate, and many people are still at risk. While we are currently in the thick of this wave, its seeming abrupt arrival and highly contagious nature have naturally raised concerns about what may come next. When will we have a better idea of Omicron's genuine impact? Is there a possibility that a new variation will emerge and supplant it? And is it possible that the new variety will produce more severe symptoms than Omicron does? Omicron appears to have reached a maximum in certain states. COVID, since early last week, the New York Times COVID tracker reports that 19 case numbers have decreased by more than 30% in Maryland, New Jersey, and New York. The third week of January was projected to be the peak in the United States, says Jessica Maylady Rivera, MS, an infectious disease epidemiology and science communicator. Variables include the following, case counts may resume their decline in states where they are now dropping, and while predictive models indicate that cases will decline in other states as well, it is difficult to tell when. By February, the peak should have passed, May Lady Rivera predicts. Nonetheless, she observes that there is typically a latency between positive cases and hospitalizations, as well as between hospitalizations and deaths. While the increase will not endure indefinitely, May Lady Rivera predicts it's going to be a trying two months. Additionally, after the Omicron spike is eliminated, another version is likely to emerge, according to Paul Pottinger, MD, an infectious diseases specialist at the University of Washington School of Medicine. I believe this surge will pass, and then another will follow, he predicts. The hope is that they will get better with each visit, but reality dictates that we may experience ups and downs. Individuals should anticipate that this is not the conclusion of the program, as much as I want it were. While it is impossible to predict with certainty whether successive mutations will result in milder or more severe symptoms, our understanding of natural selection provides some hope. Each time a virus, or any other living entity, divides, genetic changes, also termed mutations, occur that may benefit or harm the organism, Dr. Pottinger explains. The SARS-CoV-2 virus benefits from changes that increase its contagiousness while reducing its severity, such as Omicron. From the virus's standpoint, increasing the virus's ability to propagate is beneficial, Dr. Pottinger explains. However, causing harm to the host is detrimental if the patient dies, the virus will be less likely to propagate. That is why we believe natural selection promotes attenuation, the process by which something becomes less harsh and hazardous over time. At the present, that process of attenuation is progressing in the right direction, but I don't believe we're there yet," he adds. To be clear, there is no certainty that the COVID-19 virus will continue to decline in virulence. It is not always correct to assume that as a virus evolves, it will deteriorate in strength, May Lady Rivera emphasizes. That is not always the case with evolution. It is not a straightforward process. The virus's next major variety may be more contagious and cause more severe disease than Omicron. In the worst-case scenario, current vaccines would not be as effective at preventing hospitalization and death as they are now, according to Glenn Nowak, PhD, co-director of the University of Georgia's College of Journalism Center for Health and Risk Communication and a former communications director for the CDC's National Immunization Program. Until additional information becomes available, it is critical to continue wearing masks, particularly KN95 and N95, avoiding big gatherings, getting vaccinated and, if eligible, boosted, and remaining home if you are sick or have been exposed. Now is not the time to relax on pandemic preparedness measures, on the contrary, Dr. Pottinger warns. The time has come to take a stand and do what is right, even if it is difficult.
When it comes to the finest preventative and safety measures, certain experts advise caution more than others, Dr. Pottinger recommends reactivating your COVID pod and avoiding encounters with persons outside of it. Others argue that fully vaccinated individuals without comorbidities that predispose them to severe COVID symptoms who feel secure doing so can continue to participate in low-risk activities such as dining outside or in well-ventilated restaurants that demand confirmation of immunization. Whatever your particular risk tolerance, scientists believe that with the Omicron variation on the rise, we must be more circumspect about what we do and who we see than we were this summer and even this fall. It is vital to be extra thoughtful of those in your community who are at a higher risk of having severe COVID symptoms. If you're visiting your elderly parents, for example, quarantine and get tested ahead and consider wearing a mask while you visit, recommends Preeti N. Milani, MD, Chief Health Officer at the University of Michigan and an infectious disease physician. Getting out of this epidemic will need a collaborative effort, we must protect ourselves first, but we must also take actions to protect others around us. At some time, you've probably heard the epidemic compared to a global group effort, and the comparison holds true. We are all on the same team. And now is not the time to place the entire load on doctors and healthcare personnel. We must all turn up, educate ourselves, and work together to help us overcome this pandemic. Yeah.